Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I call this special subcommittee of motor vehicles uh, to order this morning. We've got one bill that continues to come back, and uh, Representative Martin. We have substitute uh, in front of us LC 2993S. Is that correct? Yes, sir. And if you would have at it. Um, you know, due to the crossover day, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm not going to re-litigate the reasons we think this is a good idea, but simply explain what the, the substitute does relative to the last bill you had before us. Um, the last bill in, uh, I believe I'm stating this right, paragraph 8, made some changes there to include uh, manufacturers of zero emission vehicles that would come into Georgia after January 15, uh after January 1st, 2015. This sub does not change that language at all. It leaves that intact and instead adds a second uh, or adds a, a different uh, way that these manufacturers of zero emissions uh, vehicles can sell. I uh, would talk to the chairman um, and then he made some suggestions. And so what you see in line 72 through 78 is the exact language uh, that, that's in eight uh, to tightly uh, narrow uh, who can do this and then what you see in line 79 through 84 is a limitation that this can only be done in the, the non-attainment zone uh, as was uh, in place in December 31st 1998 and uh, you should have each one of you should have Mr. Chairman uh, a map like this that, that tells you what the 13 county metro uh, non-attainment zone so basically as the bill reads uh, according to Ms. Doldy that um, that language in C would only allow the manufacturer uh, of zero emission vehicles to define A and B to sell in that geographic area, um, which would allow them, they could continue, they could um, sell with dealers outside that area, but that uh, language would be, um, the committee would need to, to add that language so that they would not lose the ability to sell direct in the 13 county area. That's what it does. It's, a, it's an attempt to uh, uh, allay the concerns of folks around the state that somehow this is, is uh, an attempt to break the uh, manufacturer dealer model. It is not. It's to give people access to innovation. The 13 county metro region was chosen because of the air non attainment area. It's a direct link between zero emission vehicles and non attainment. Um, additionally, this is uh, in, in this metro area. It's where more infrastructure exists actually charged, so there'll be more of a demand while this comes up, up and out of the ground. Gives Georgia an opportunity to get started. Gives this committee an opportunity to look at how to integrate it at a later date. Questions from the committee members? Any questions? It appears that this is a carve out to change the way that uh, the consumer has been treated by being able to go through a franchisee for service and the such, is that correct? Well, I, I would phrase it as it, it was a, it, it is a, a bill to allow the consumer to go directly to a manufacturer. It certainly doesn't prohibit the, them to, from using a franchise dealer if they wish. All right, any questions from the committee members? All right. We have a Dan West. Good morning, members of the committee. My name is Dan West, uh, Director of Public Policy at Rivian Automotive. I actually would like to waive my time to my colleague, Caitlin Monahan, who's been here on the ground for the past few weeks working this bill. She can tell a better story of the steps that have been taken. Now, is this the same uh, lady that spoke at the last meeting? Yes, sir. Do you have anything new that you want to add to this uh, story, ma'am? Just a quick recap of the steps. Thank right. you. Very good. Thank you, Mr. West. Good morning, Kaylin Monahan here. Good to see you all. One thing I wanted to share is just how we've really been trying to work with the GADA on this language. We really believe that we can coexist here in Georgia, that the market is big enough for different business models, that consumers should have some choice on how they'd like to purchase a vehicle, and that Rivian should have the opportunity to invest here in the state. In the next five years, we'd like to hire around 50 employees and invest around $5 million in, in Georgia. Uh, 
Before the bill was introduced, we shared, we met with the GADA, we shared draft language, and, and we really intentionally tried to uh, make something that was very narrow. And that's by saying that no manufacturer that already has this franchise dealer network would have the opportunity to, to sell directly. It was very intentional not to directly impact their business model and the relationship that they have with their franchisors. The initial intent of, of this type of legislation was to protect dealers from their own franchisors. So lawmakers thought that it would actually be unfair if the dealers made these investments in the communities. If the franchisors could come across the street undersell them, according to the Department of Justice, seven to 10%. They could undersell because they have less cost, and maybe that would be unfair. It wasn't intended to, to keep new manufacturers out or new investment out for those that don't have this ex existing network. So for that reason, we excluded uh, those existing franchisors from this legislation in hopes that it would be something that they would be open to. In fact, in Colorado, when we worked on a similar bill, the dealers were neutral on this language when that change was, was made. But they wouldn't um, consider it. They, they wouldn't talk to us. We, we asked if there was a, if they would suggest a change, if there was something else that, that they would consider or like to see, and they refused to have that conversation. Then, based on what we've heard kind of secondhand from lawmakers, we looked at a substitute language. We heard two main things. First, there was this concern that actually franchisors would be able to sell their vehicles through a manufacturer dealership. So for example, would Ford be able to sell their vehicles through Rivian? That was not our intention at all. We also believe that that would be prohibited under existing law. But to really button it up, we added a very specific provision that would very clearly prevent that. We also heard, what about service? How will these manufacturers provide uh, service? Chairman, that was a concern that, that you raised. And we added a requirement for in-state service. Still, the GADA didn't want to have a conversation and that it was about the, the rural dealers. How would the dealers be impacted in rural parts of Georgia by this legislation? I think we heard that a company called Rivian that most people have never heard of would come in the state, sell a handful of vehicles, and 30,000 people would lose their jobs overnight. No one would buy a Ford or a GM anymore, which I think everyone here knows that that's ridiculous. Um, but even so, this, this third uh, attempt is really to make it so that manufacturers like Rivian wouldn't be able to invest in rural communities, which is unfortunate actually, because I think um, there are some communities that would like our investment, but that's excluded from, from this provision. And I, I hope that this body sees it as really a good faith effort on our part to, to work something out. We're, we're genuinely trying um, and if there is something else that, that they'd like to see, we'd certainly be open to that conversation, um, as we have been for, for months, open to that conversation. We, we want to work something out, and our intention is certainly not to um, interfere with those existing business models, but simply to have the opportunity to invest here um, and become part of the community ourselves. But happy, happy to take any questions. All right, committee members, does anyone have any questions? I think you've done a great job. You've had two bites of the apple, and thank you so much. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. You might want to hold on just in case after the other speakers speak, that in case somebody else wants to ask something. Uh, Leah Kirshner.
May I take my mask off? We would appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I did not get an opportunity to speak last week when the subcommittee met, but uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Leah Kirshner. I'm the president of GADA. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. Um, I realize you have a very long day ahead of you, so I will be brief. Um, the first thing I would like to address is Ms. Monahan's um, discussion about GADA not working with Rivian. Um, it is true we did meet with them. Um, via Zoom earlier this year prior to the session. Um, we have been consistent in our position that we believe that um, any bill of this sort will be uh, the beginning of the dismantling of the franchise system. Um, as to the substitute that you have before you today, um, that was not provided to us via Rivian, it was provided to us. but. Um, our position has been consistent uh, regardless of what happens in Colorado. This is Georgia. It's not Colorado. Um, one thing I'd like, I'd like to address, I'm not going to rehash all the things that you've already heard. I don't want to waste your time. Um, I, I would like to address a couple of statements that were made last week at the subcommittee hearing. Um, we've heard a lot about how this bill will, by allowing direct sales and manufacturers, will open up the market to Georgia consumers. Um, I believe Mr. Witt from Lucid made the statement that they want to provide EVs to the masses. Um, there was a representative from the Ray, um, a represent, representative from the EV Driving Club. Um, they want to help the growth of the EV market. The reality is this bill wouldn't accomplish any of these goals. If the idea behind this bill is the free flow of affordable, and I emphasize affordable, electric vehicles, in giving Georgians more choices, you would think that they would want to utilize a distribution system that has arteries throughout the entire state. They would want to utilize a system whereby a consumer can negotiate a price below $70,000 for a vehicle, whereby a consumer can get service anywhere in the state. The reality is it's not really about accessibility of EVs and choices. It's about selling EVs to a small segment of the market and controlling price in that market. The unintended consequences is what we need to be concerned about here. Um, it is true. The manufacturers at this point have said, we have no intention of selling directly. Well, things change. I think we can all agree that things change as we sit here in face masks six, six feet apart. Um, this will give that opportunity to the manufacturers. They could potentially, somewhere down the road, decide they're going to switch gears, have a spin-off company, make investments in other companies, and at the, at the end of the day, will be the demise of the franchise system, a system that has served the consumers of this state and the economy of this state very well for a very long time. Um, another point that has been repeated is, well, we made this exception in 2015, why shouldn't we be able to benefit from an exception? Again, I repeat, <laughs> things are different. That was six years ago. Six years ago, this body, the General Assembly, made the policy decision that they would give a startup company an opportunity to get its feet off the ground here in Georgia. This is, fast forward six years later, we've got 100 EV models that will be introduced in the next year or two or three. Dealers are very well positioned to sell and service those vehicles throughout the state. We don't need another exception. We don't need another experiment. Um, you've heard a lot about how you know the direct sales model has worked. 80% of the vehicles are sold by, 80% of the EVs are sold by Tesla in this state. Well, that may be true, but that's because the offerings of other uh, brands are limited. But those, those brands are coming. Those vehicles are coming. Um, in just one month, February last month, the Mach-E, which was released by Ford and distributed through dealerships, um, Tesla's market share went down by 12%. I mean, the Mach-E was outsold Tesla in one month. Um, so there are a lot of reasons why this bill does not make sense. Um, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, this bill is not in the best interest of Georgians. Uh, I, don't, uh, I believe Ben is on the list, but I, you've already heard from All him. Right. So. Do we have any members that wish has a question? Ms. Kirshner. No? 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Jordan. All right. Any questions from the committee of Mr. Jordan? <coughs> Is there anyone else that wishes to testify? Mr. Chairman, I, I respectfully disagree with the lady. That's that's not a surprise. I, I'm, I'm a free market guy. I, I welcome them, uh, the dealers and the manufacturers that make in electric cars, uh, compete, put Tesla out of business. I, I, I don't, it doesn't matter to me what Georgians buy. I just want to be able to buy uh, buy things. And, and I think we all know in, in this uh, room that uh, the reason that GADA supported the bill a couple of years ago is they needed something that was in the bill uh, to keep the manufacturer system, uh, the dealer network in place as it is, and we agreed to do that because we don't, we're, we're not here. And when I say we, I mean me on behalf of the people I represent. I don't represent Rivian, I don't represent GADA, Tesla, or anybody else. But we agreed to do that because we left in place um, something where people had invested uh, stranded capital and, and had agreements in place, and we left that in place, and we had something that coexists. At every stage of the, the game, I have been open and asked what we can do to make this fit together. Uh, the chairman asked me to, to put something together to do that. The, the lady's right. She didn't get it to Rivian because Rivian didn't write this. I did. I wrote it because the non-attainment zone aligns directly with zero emission vehicles. It gives us a way to start this and let them compete. These companies that are coming in and want to sell direct, if they get their feet to the fire because people are buying in a different model, let them compete. Let Georgians buy it. So I just would say this. Um, I, I represent, you know, on the north side of 50, maybe 60,000 people, as each one of you do. Um, I respect the fact that our dealers have spent, you know, millions of dollars in capital and employ a lot of people and do a lot in our communities. And this can coexist. Pure and simple, Georgians deserve a choice. Um, I hope this committee will uh, move this move this forward and, and give us an opportunity to continue discussions. But make no mistake, if we continue to, to, to ignore it and put it in a hole, um, there, there are no negotiations. This bill is negotiating with myself. Thank, thankful to, to Chairman Corbett for, for helping me with it. But GADA has not come with any language, any suggestion. They're right. They, they don't want a thing to change. And when things don't change, Georgians don't get better opportunities. Our state doesn't get better. And I respectfully uh, believe that this is a step to allowing uh, these two models to coexist and let them compete and let the best company and distribution model win. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Any questions? Uh, I will answer questions. If any questions from any of the committee members? Any comments? All right. I will make a comment, and I appreciate that. I think five years ago the reason the legislation passed was because Tesla had filed a lawsuit, and the lawsuit they found a niche in the law, and that was the reason legislation went forward. And uh, But I think that was what happened five years ago. All right. Any comments from any of the committee members? All right, what's the will of the committee? What's the will of the committee? All right. If there's no motion on the table, then this committee will move this bill back to the full committee with a, with a no recommendation. No recommendation. All right. If there's no other questions, then this meeting stands adjourned.